Okay, everybody, um, we've looked at this six inch starter before, but I just wanted today to home in a bit closer on it and exactly how it works. So we will start off from the basics. I think I've explained this to you before. An essential concept here in electrical engineering is that voltage appears across things. Current flows through things, but voltage is always measured from one point to some other point. If I look down at these batteries here, I have got 12, uh, 24 volts across there and 12 volts across there and equally so 12 volts across there. If I follow those cables up here, right up here to the starter, I have got 12 volts across there. I hope that's clear. 12 volts between that point and that point. Now, if those 12 volts got their way, they would force current down into the starter here. But they can't because there's nowhere for the current to go. It's all open circuit in there at the minute. But if I press the starter button, this coil in here, in here, you see those coils of wire there? Those coils in there become energized and that little coil in there has got a, an iron core in it. It becomes magnetized. And what will happen is it'll pull this little chap in. I'll show you that working now. See? Right? Now, whenever it pulls that heavy copper thing in, it connects that point to that point, which means we've now got 12 volts between our negative and there. We've got a full 12 volts. Current will flow down through that heavy wire into the starter and cause the starter to, to turn and start the engine. But in this case, it's not doing that. It's supplying sufficient current through this thin wire here into the auxiliaries here which is sufficient to move the rotor out but insufficient to turn the pinion with any energy. There's not enough energy there to stir your tea, never mind start a big diesel engine. So what's wrong? What's wrong is the contacts here, I can use my laser pen here, the contact there at the top is making contact just there but the bottom one in there you see that chap there where the, where the green light is that chap is not coming in close enough look see you see there's a tiny gap down in there mm -hmm. now there's an, a re number of reasons for this possibly this coil here has just got tired with with age or this needs adjusting here but if you're out at sea uh, and your starter's displaying this, uh, this fault, how can you get away? How can you get your engine started? Well, it's another one of my get me home tricks. If I press the button, right, and simply get a heavy screwdriver and push on there like that, you'll see the engine will start. Because I've completed this circuit here, the full current is coming in here to the main windings and that's causing the, the pinion to spin energetically. You can see that again now. Got it? So, that's another one of my get, my, get, get me home tricks. And I hope I've explained the current path in this starter, maybe a bit closer than I did in, in the past. So I hope you... I thought I'd finish with this video, but I've decided that I haven't really done it justice. There's still more detail. What it boils down to is whenever I push the button, uh, the coil in here, as I've explained, pulls in that switch. This switch here is designed in such a way that the top part makes contact before the bottom part. 
whenever the top part makes contact, it brings this point here up to 12 volts. Current will then flow down through that thin wire there into the windings inside, which cause, as I explained before, causes the whole rotor to come out and rotate slowly. But as it comes out, it causes a little trip, a little mechanical trip in here to rise. And that means that the bottom part of the switch can then make contact with this component here. And heavy current can flow down through this um, insulated wire here and into the main windings in the starter and the full torque is then applied and the engine would start. It's quite difficult to show you that little trip in there because it's hard to pick it up with the camera. Um, but you'll have to believe me. It's just whenever the, whenever the trip is moving forward, there's a, <clears throat> there's a disc on the rotor. And as the disc comes forward on the rotor, it just causes the, the trip to lift up. And that brings on the full current. Now, whenever the full current comes on, the current flows through all the windings and appears out here at the bottom. So, under normal circumstances, whenever the starter is running, that point there at the bottom will also be at 12 volts. So if it's not at 12 volts, you've got a bad connection there. Now there is quite a cluster of um, we cover plates and screws and things in there, and it does give bother. It can uh, it can become uh, it doesn't it refuses to conduct electricity. So once the rotor has moved forward. This point here, that big plate there, becomes live. That comes up to 12 volts. And that supplies not only the main windings in there, as I described, but also the brushes. It supplies the brushes and current flows into the armature. And that's, that's how the starter works. You've got current in the armature and you've got current in the, in the field windings and they interact and that's what causes the starter to turn. Now, We've actually got this starter working now. Uh, we discovered those two problems. One, we had a bad earth here on the wire. Whenever you push the button, current flows through that little small terminal, down that yellow wire there, into the coil, back out of that other yellow wire, and back down onto the negative. That plate there is negative. It's always negative, irrespective of whether you've pushed the starter button or not, or irrespective of the position of the rotor. That's always negative and that's always positive. At least that becomes positive once you push the button. So we had a bad earth there at that screw. So as you'll see, she's now working. Oh, we, this little nut here at the front gives us butter. That little nut has to be on sufficiently tight, tight uh, to bring the whole lot up together. As we say here in Ireland, it takes the old dog for the hard road. It takes the old dog for the hard road. Thank you so much.